Uh, I am one of the faculty members at the International uh, Undergraduate Program uh, of Human Sciences, and I teach uh, classes that pertain to uh, global politics. Uh, so one important thing to say at, right at the beginning, because now we already have experience of um, maybe students not understanding what human sciences are, and I just want to uh, clarify that this is not program in natural sciences. So what does this mean? We offer a multidisciplinary approach to studying, uh, well, uh, institutions, society in general, from point of view of, let's say, sociology, uh, psychology, uh, political science, education. So this is uh, just important to understand that you will have this, um, well, if I can say 5D view of, of things uh, in the program. Okay, without further ado, let me share the presentation with you. I hope you can see it and I will try to uh, be as concise as possible and remain in the time frame. So first, um, I want to uh, say that um, we have three research focuses. Uh, so here- uh, I'm sorry, one... Alex, your slides is a showing on the presenter's view. Maybe you can swap it at the top. Okay. Okay, here? Yeah. Perfect. Great, sorry. So we have three research focuses to allow for students in their uh, third year to choose what they would mostly want to focus on. As I said, the first two years are more multidisciplinary, so you will be studying all of these different disciplines at the same time. So we have... Um, core subjects that you have to take in political science, sociology, education, uh, or psychology. And then after that, uh, in your third year, you will have to decide, well, where you want to focus on uh, towards your uh, graduation. So you will have your third and fourth year to focus on either diversity and inclusion studies. So this uh, focus basically um, looks at uh, issues of equality and participation and inclusion of groups that are differently uh, located uh, in the society and is linked to UNESCO chairing global health and education. Uh, the second uh, research focus are Japan studies, and this basically offers you Japan as a case study. So you are studying Japan from point of view of, let's say, culture, um, institutions, um, uh, society, and also we are looking at, well, uh, Japan's foreign policy and, in general, uh, influence uh, within larger uh, international order. And the third uh, focus are political and global studies, where we actually study more broadly. So we are not only looking at Japan, but we are looking at basically international politics, domestic politics, political economy, so it's much more comprehensive. A few words about um, the, the, the scope of the program. I would say that this is a very small program and that's something that students are quite surprised by when they come. So you will not be just, let's say, uh, one uh, number among many students as is case in uh, many different, well, universities that, well, have larger departments. So here we are able to interact with you on a more, let's say, uh, personal level and offer you personal feedback. So, well, having that, uh, let's say, smaller scope or smaller structure, we basically uh, use learner-centered approach, which means that we really uh, want to see uh, what you need to improve. You will get uh, individualized feedback and there is more opportunity for interaction between professors and students. Uh, we offer, uh, certain opportunities to our students that I will just talk about in a moment uh, during their undergraduate studies. So, for example, in your second year, if you wish, you can uh, come up with your own research proposal and uh, conduct this short research study. And we, uh, well, if you are selected, we would offer you uh, financial means and support to execute uh, that project. Another option that is that in, uh, in your third year, you can choose one of our numerous uh, partner universities overseas and go for a study abroad year. So in the third, uh, in your third year, and then when you come back, we will, we would transfer your credits, right, uh, to match our, our system. And then, uh, of course, at the end of your studies, you will write a graduation project, so undergrad thesis, right? Uh, and you will work on that project during your fourth year, starting from uh, basically coming up with, a, with an idea of dissertation, 
on one of the topics um, that our professors are qualified to supervise. So basically, uh, you will have more than enough time to also hone your academic uh, skills. Um, well, this is now as a part of Osaka University, we do offer different ways to well engage. So we have uh, some, of course, uh, health and counseling um, uh, services that we offer and also homestay and brother and sister programs. So you can uh, choose your, for example, host family, and then they can be your, well, Japanese family, quote unquote, in Japan, right? So you can interact more with people uh, here in, in Osaka. And of course, we have uh, international exchange office support that can actually uh, really provide you with any guidance re regarding your, well, study abroad or career choices, etc. Um, I said it at the beginning, our uh, student body and teaching body is very diverse. So we have students coming from, well, uh, all over the world with different profiles. So that's something that you can actually go and check uh, on our Student Council uh, website and YouTube channel that will be displayed at the end of this presentation. But you can actually have a little bit more of a sense of uh, what we do and how students interact in our program. And also the program offers um, beyond uh, academic training, we do offer some uh, life skills programs where we basically teach you some so socio-emotional intelligence, information literacy and negotiation. Uh, so these are important skills. So it's not just, uh, as I said, academic skills is also these very uh, important skills that you will take uh, for your journey ahead. Now, you might wonder if you study at this program, what can you do when you graduate? So uh, we have information that two thirds of our uh, graduates uh, finish by uh, working in consultancy for uh, here is actually the, well, some of the logos of companies where they work. So Google, Rakuten, Goldman Sachs. Uh, JICA, Osaka Gas, for example, uh, and one third goes uh, for graduate studies. Where, well, it can be in Japan, so uh, usually it's the University of Tokyo, Kyoto, uh, or abroad, the London School of Economics. We had um, Oxford University, Boston College, or also Harvard University. So basically, um, you know, you can go and um, pursue your graduate studies and actually succeed in entering quite highly comp competitive schools and programs. So this is basically uh, first, as I said about the program now, I would like to say a few words about uh, the application process. So the application process for uh, next year, so 2024 for the, uh, for the academic year will be actually uh, open uh, on December 1st. 10 a.m. And then basically until January uh, 5, 2024, you will have to actually uh, register your application and pay a fee. Uh, so it's not only all online, you also have to send your application by mail. So by post, it should uh, arrive, be received uh, at Osaka University um, our, or our department by January 12, 2024. And then uh, we will screen them. And uh, basically on February 18, we will send out in interview notifications. So you, if you were selected for interviews and then we will conduct interviews uh, throughout February and early March, 2024. Uh, and in late March, 2024, we will actually notify you of uh, screening results. And you will have all the way until May, um, 8, 2024 to reply uh, to our offers by email and then June 6, you should uh, pay enrollment fees and apply for visa timely so that you can actually um, come to Japan and meanwhile, so in uh, July 2024, you should submit to us uh, your IB results uh, and or August 2024 for A-level results. So this is something that we would expect to receive from, from you uh, during these two months. And then in late September uh, or October 1st, uh, you will move into the dorm and the classes will start. So fall winter semester 2024. So here are some, um, let's say some information about um, tuition fees. So you have to pay, uh, of course, entrance fee uh, and the prices are here displayed in Japanese yen. But if we uh, convert this roughly, it would be one, I believe $1,700. 
uh, for entrance fee, then yearly tuition is, uh, well, around here roughly um, uh, 500,000 Japanese yen. So this would be probably around uh, 4,200 uh, uh, US dollars. Uh, and then for living expenses, so this is an estimate. Again, please take that into account uh, so that you, you would need uh, 138,000 Japanese yen. So also I want to say at this point that we do offer a few scholarships, but that is only after you um, are accepted or you, you are basically offered a... a uh, space in the program that we would consider you as a recipient of uh, max scholarship or you can also individually apply for other uh, scholarships uh, so here in this um, basically um, um, expense breakdown we um, are uh, looking at accommodation that is around 25,000 Japanese yen which is roughly 170 US dollars and then uh, also we have to count uh, utilities, insurance, um, uh, including medical insurance, transportation, and meals. So as I said, uh, roughly uh, 138,000 Japanese yen, which should be uh, smoothly covered uh, by the scholarship in case you are a scholarship recipient. Uh, Basically, uh, for uh, first-year students, on-campus dormitories are guaranteed. As you saw, we have multiple campuses, and this dormitory would be on Toyonaka campus. And uh, individual rooms are uh, basically equipped with shower, kitchenette, uh, bed, everything that you need. I think it's a great start for, um, well, uh, your freshman year, but then in your second year, you would have to uh, search for an apartment and usually students are, uh, as I said, um, helping out each other, referencing different apartments. So when fourth years leave, then first years might, uh, second years, I'm sorry, might take uh, their apartment. So it you, you shouldn't be worried about that part. And if you have, um, as I said, curiosity in seeing, uh, let's say, our students and uh, the their experience uh, that they share on Instagram or YouTube uh, account, please uh, don't hesitate. Or if you want to actually write to us, please visit our uh, website. Uh, so you can just write uh, Haas Osaka University and you will actually get all the necessary uh, emails. Uh, well, I will not take more time. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, <clears throat> I'm Luca Baiotti. I uh, do physics in the School of Science. And uh, today uh, I'm going to introduce uh, our School of Science and uh, our, uh, in particular our international undergraduate program in science. The, yeah, first of all, um, let me um, emphasize what uh, we want our students to become, to become, how we want to educate our students in the School of Science. We want them to acquire advanced knowledge and skills to, through uh, cutting edge research. As you know, Osaka University is a very much research oriented university, and uh, that's uh, particularly true for. The, the School of Science it's about basic research and some applied research. Um, we want our students to become able to define problems, not just to solve problems, of course. Um, this is the, the first step in research. And uh, maybe most important of, of all, we want our students to feel the joy of, and curi of curiosity for the natural sciences and for science in, in, uh, in general. So, um, our School of Science, or maybe Graduate School of Science, has six uh, departments that uh, you see listed here. Um, they are basically reflected in the undergraduate departments of uh, physics, chemistry, mathematics, and biological sciences. And uh, there are several uh, research institutes that you see listed and uh, at the bottom of the page. These are very uh, advanced research institutes, um, uh, world renowned, and uh, even undergraduate students in their fourth year may work in uh, with, with professors with research groups in one of these um, in one of these uh, laboratories, for example. The okay, it was um, 
this is about how many international students we currently have. It's about the same um, percentage in uh, than that than uh, Osaka University as a whole that was previously presented. So mostly from Asia, and uh, in Asia, mostly as you see here from China and uh, South Korea and so on. We were very keen in the finding um, even a more varied um, student population. So today I will uh, talk, so we, we have uh, three programs in English, degrees, pro degree programs in English in the School of Science. One is an undergraduate program and two are graduate programs. I will not talk more about these, just mention them. We have a uh, graduate program for master and, and PhD in physics and one in chemistry and biology and macromolecular science. But uh, today, I will uh, only talk about our undergraduate program, IUPS. Uh, it is a bachelor's degree program, uh, and the uh, students may measure in uh, any of our four departments, uh, undergraduate departments, biological sciences, chemistry, mathematics, or physics. The one of the main characteristics of uh, the IUPS is that it is carried out both in English and in Japanese. In particular, the coursework starts mainly in English in the first year, one, two years, and then continues mainly in Japanese in the third and fourth year, in the later years. And this, we, we decided to do so because uh, we would like our students to be prepared to also for further studies and for work in Japan as well as anywhere else in the world. So uh, at the end of with their degree, they will also have the bonus of being proficient uh, not only in English, but in Japanese as well. Um, at the beginning, most of the, uh, the, most of the course is in English and also the entrance examination, the scientific assessment for the entrance examination is in English with the exception of mathematics and biological sciences that may um, ask questions in Japanese as well. Um, however, um, some elementary Japanese proficiency is required at application time uh, because we estimated that starting from re really zero Japanese proficiency may be difficult to um, complete the the program in in four a year four and a half years so we do require um, a japanese language proficiency test level n3 or higher and two or higher for biology and um, this is uh, attainable for uh, excellent students for good students in a couple of years two or three years of uh, language study before coming to Osaka University. And uh, for those who enroll in our program, then we offer a preliminary intensive Japanese language course, which is held at Osaka University. It lasts six months and um, it's, um, yeah, it must be attended by, by um, all successful applicants that want to enroll in Osaka University. At the end of this six months, the students will enter the School of Science proper. So the total duration of the program is 4.5 years uh, for, for the science program and six months for the preliminary language course. The classes here are also here are small, about 10 students. So uh, it's a very much one-to-one -one personal education that you may receive here. And um, yeah, also for our students, we have there is preferential access to university dormitories for the first year. A little bit more in detail about the the, the general curriculum for the four years. For the four years, um, the first year is general education, including more Japanese language and some basic major subject. The second year uh, focuses more on the core major subject of choice of the student, and the third year is sp uh, mostly spent in a specialized major subject and the fourth year is basically dedicated completely to research. Students must uh, choose uh, a lab, a research group to work with and as I mentioned you can be also in a research institute of Osaka University. 
And uh, as I mentioned, the first part of the of the program is mostly conducted in English, and the second part is mostly conducted in Japanese. If you already want to know more details, here is the link, the URL for uh, the, the student manual that you find online. And um, in the first, uh, in the earlier years, um, you can, may foresee about 15 hours of classes per week, and of course, much more study out of class as well. The um, next application deadline for this program is uh, January 10th, and uh, requ the required documents for application, some of them are fairly standard, so application forms uh, and transcripts and letters of recommendation. And uh, we do require the results of a standardized test for university admission. Um, mathematics, physics, and chemistry for applicants to these three departments. Uh, we accept basically any national standardized, standardized test of uh, any country, if there is one. But of course, we actually prefer um, the EJU, Examination for Japanese University Admission for International Students, because that is more standardized for, for applicants to Japan. And here are the courses that are required for application through the EJU. And we're uh, very happy to welcome uh, IB students, A-level students, ACT uh, and uh, AP um, results. Uh, as I said, together with other national standardized tests. Uh, now to that, instead for biology, only EJU is accepted. Uh, other documents necessary for application is an essay where you tell us why you wish to study with us. I uh, have to pay some fee, give us some, the, your copy of your passport, and then a certification of the Engli English language proficiency. We accept very various um, standardized tests uh, with these minimum scores. And um, of course, this is not necessary for native English speakers. And uh, as I mentioned, we do require uh, a certification of Japanese language proficiency, again, except for native speakers. And that would be preferably with the Japanese language proficiency test or with some other document from maybe maybe from some language school that uh, attests that uh, the applicant has a similar level of proficiency. The um, selection flow is presented on this slide. Uh, after the screening of the documents, those uh, some of the applicants will be invited to an in-person assessment, to an interview, which uh, will be held in uh, February, or March uh, next year. And uh, uh, let me give more details. So um, different departments here have different uh, um, arrangements. Um, applicants to mathematics uh, will have to undergo an interview uh, in a, coming to uh, Osaka University or one of the Osaka University centers abroad in Bangkok, Berkeley, or Groningen. For physics and chemistry instead, all interviews may be held online. And for uh, biology, uh, also biology applicants are required to come to uh, Osaka University to have uh, to be interviewed. Um, I mentioned that science assessment is in English um, and uh, Japanese for math and biology. I have to fix the slide. And um, we, also for chemistry and, and the physics, we do ask simple questions in Japanese, like introduce yourself, just to uh, have a, um, a grasp on uh, your um, everyday uh, Japanese proficiency. And the announcement of successful applicants will be informally out in April 2024. Um, now, I mentioned that <coughs> the best selling point of a second university is research, is forefront research. So let me briefly in, introduce, uh, give an overview of the topics of research that we offer in the School of Science, starting from physics. There are more than 30 groups uh, that cover basically all of uh, physics. 
um, they can be divided into two main categories, particle and nuclear physics, and uh, where, uh, uh, for example, neutrinos that matter, Higgs boson supersymmetry and gravity are studied both in theoretical and experimental uh, ways. And the other big group is condensed matter physics with the studies on superconductivity, uh, 2D materials, and, uh, uh, like a strong correlated system and so on. And uh, we have also other topics like astrophysics and, and cosmology. It's a smaller group, but with uh, very active and with uh, many topics within it. We have laser physics, in particular, and nuclear fusion and uh, reproducing astrophysics um, events in the laboratory, because we have a very powerful laser on campus that also students can use, can uh, participate uh, in research using it. And finally, other topics we uh, I, I summarize as in this interdisciplinary, uh, uh, like uh, biophysics and industrial applications. That was for physics. Um, the um, chemistry department uh, and and um, biology department are even bigger. Um, and uh, in this slide, there is just a very general list of uh, the broad uh, subjects of research that. Um, can be mentioned and they basically cover all uh, your possible interest in chemistry and uh, biology. Um, I think, uh, yeah, the um, it was already reminded how are the tuition fees and, and the expected expenses. I just want to uh, uh, highlight then uh, about more than 40% of our undergraduate international students uh, receives some some sort of financial support. But uh, as also mentioned earlier, unfortunately, most of the scholarships can be applied to only after enrollment. Um, that's how it is. And uh, also, as you mentioned, we offer the first year in our dormitories. And... Uh, we have a, a special center for uh, support to international students uh, that, uh, oops, how do I go back? That um, uh, includes um, health support and counseling in English, uh, some fun activities, traveling, and, and so on with the, in the science body program, where each international student is paired with a Japanese student, um, and with different um, Japanese students. We do offer career support, like explanation sessions in English, if necessary, and, and the individual counseling and the further language training if needed, but actually IUPS students will be very proficient in Japanese at the end of their studies, so that's probably not needed. And um, yeah, for those who, uh, yeah, our students go to um, renowned companies like those mentioned here or to academic uh, positions. And uh, yes, this is all for uh, my presentation. I'm open for questions later. Thank you.